there is a global epidemic, not just in rich countries, of multimorbidity, meaning multiple diseases. So on average, in Scotland, but probably in other countries as well, after the age of 65, people are multimorbid. They have at least two chronic diseases. Medicine is so guideline-driven now that you are, you know, it's quite common to say have hypertension, diabetes mellitus, type 2 osteoarthritis, and before you know it, you're on seven or eight drugs. If you're on seven drugs, you have an 80% chance of adverse drug reactions, 80%. Um, so what we desperately need is effective alternatives, and particularly for, antimicro uh, for antibiotics. Antimicrobial resistance is a huge problem. In a few years' time, we're going to have no antibiotics left because they're overused, they're used indiscriminately, and because there has been no new class of antibiotics since the 1970s, no new class. I mean, there have been individual drugs, but no basic new class of antibiotics. And the British government has a strategy for this, uh, which you know, won't work, or at least will only slow down the problem, unless somebody develops you know, a whole new class of antibiotics, of which there is little sign at the moment. So what I argued was that homeopathy can reduce antibiotic use. It is an effective treatment for, for instance, upper respiratory tract infections in children. There's clear evidence of that. Uh, and it can reduce the, the need for antibiotics. There's a large-scale study done in France called EPI-3. This is nearly 7,000 patients basically comparing patients who attend homeopathic general practitioners, family physicians, with patients who do not, who attend conventional family physicians. Uh, so large scale, and they've got three cohorts. Uh, one is muscular skeletal, another is um, um, upper respiratory tract infections, and another is uh, sleep and psychological disorders. And the main difference that the treatment per se makes is that it reduces drug use including antibiotics, including non-steroidal drugs, including psychotropic drugs, in the different categories. Um, another study, also done in France actually, of 500 children with recurrent upper respiratory tract infections, again shows dramatic differences between those who attend um, family physicians with what they call orientation homeopathique, meaning they, they practice conventional medicine but they integrate homeopathy, and ordinary GPs. So again and again you see the pattern that the use of antibiotics and indeed other drugs by GPs who incorporate homeopathy in the practice is much, much lower. The EPI-3 studies actually looked at three categories. So you have conventional GPs, what they call mixed practice, and homeopathy. So that mean, means GPs who incorporate homeopathy in their practice, of which, you know, there's about 5% of GPs in France who do that. Uh, and they, the, the French like diplomas and so on, so you can be sure that they are actually trained. So no, it is, it is homeopathy, not complementary medicine.